the next measure is Proposition 17. And we have Luke Kushmaro presenting. Thank you. So to provide a little background before we get into what this proposition does, the state constitution allows most US citizens who are residents of California and at least 18 years of age to vote so long as they register to vote. This includes people who are currently in county jail or supervised by county probation departments in the community. However, the state constitution prevents some people from registering to vote, including those who are in state prison and those who are on state parole. In California, state parole is a period of time that some individuals coming out of prison serve um, after serving a prison term for a serious or violent offense. Currently, there are roughly 50,000 people on state parole. Proposition 17 would change the state constitution to allow people on state parole to register to vote and thereby allow them to vote. Um, this would have some increases in workload, both at the county level and also at the state level. At the county level, there would be increased workload due to there being additional individuals who register to vote, creating increased work for county election officials who manage lists of registered voters and validate that all those voters registered in that county are eligible to vote. And it would also create workload for the county election officials because there would be increased ballots that would need to be mailed out and other ballot materials. At the state level, there'd be increased one times, and at the county level, these increased costs would probably be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. At the state level, there'd be increased workload on a one-time basis to update some voter electronic voter registration systems that the state operates, as well as voter registration cards to reflect that state parolees would be eligible to register to vote. This one-time workload would result in one-time state costs that would also likely be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Thank you, and happy to answer any questions you have when we get to that point. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so this was put on the, the ballot by the state legislature also. Um, Kevin McCarty from Sacramento, a member of the assembly, uh, was the one who authored it in the first place. And it, it passed also by a mostly party line vote, Democrats in favor. Um, the endorsements are the Democratic Party, Green Party, Libertarian, and Peace and Freedom parties. And then opposition is the Republicans. In support, we have the ACLU, the League of Women Voters, um, some unions, including the teachers and nurses unions, Kamala Harris, um, some de Democratic legislators, Alex Padilla, and several other organizations. And then against we have the Farm Bureau Federation and a, a state Senator Jim Nielsen, who's a Republican. And the money is, is extremely lopsided. We, so we have um, the ACLU and the Nurses Association, some unions and so forth, uh, giving money on, on the pro side and we don't have expenditures on the other side. So, you know, relatively low expenditures on this one compared to the other ballot measures. All right, so we are to the Q&A part. Are there any particular conditions as there are in Florida? No, so the Florida one had a condition in it that um, debts would and fees would need to be paid in order to be registered to vote. That's not a condition in this. It would just change the state constitution to say that they would be able to register to vote. Okay, so once they're on parole, that's it. Yeah. Um, any studies done on the impact of parolee voting rights on crime? Um, so there has been a study in Florida that looked at how voting rights impacted recidivism or the correlation between voting rights and recidivism. Um, the, the research is pretty limited at this time. It looks like that is it for questions on this, unless anybody has a last minute one to put in the Q&A. All right, thank you so much for your help and we will move on to the next measure.